there are some topics that are just really, really large, vast, and for some of us, they might make us feel tired thinking about them. And they're topics such as uh, iconographic uh, programs, such as Padmasambhava, Avalokiteshvara, Tara, uh, even the Buddha. These are really, really big topics. And uh, there's a tremendous amount of art that needs to be looked at. And there's um, there can be hundreds or, or over a thousand years of, of depth and layers that needs to be uh, really explained and described. So, but, but right now I want to talk about Padmasambhava, a very big topic. And there's really three ways that we can look at it iconographically. Uh, we can look at it as the main form of Padmasambhava. Then we can the second is uh, specialty forms, which are based on the main form of Padmasambhava. And then the third are meditational forms that don't look anything like Padmasambhava. They could be peaceful, they could be wrathful, they could be female, they could be male, uh, they could be uh, anything that's within the, 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 the domain of, of Himalayan or, or uh, Buddhist art. So we have three types of, of um, iconographic really uh, categories of Padmasambhava. Now the first category, the, the main form. The main form is uh, very typically one face, two armed. Uh, he's a uh, male, appears slightly middle-aged or sometimes even a little bit older with a mustache and a goatee and he also has a furrowed brow. Because the main form of Padmasambhava is actually modeled after the king appearance within the 11 figurative forms of Himalayan art that we find. Um, kings such as Song Sangampo and Trisung Detson, they will also have a furrowed brow, as will the wealth deities uh, such as Jambala, Vaishravana, and the four guardian kings of the, of the directions. They all have a furrowed brow because they fit into this model of, of um, the 11 figurative forms, uh, the category of kings. Padmasambhava in his main form has this cat has this appearance of a king. Now, he has one face, two arms. The first arm holds a, a Vajra scepter. Second uh, hand holds a skull cup with the long life vase in it. Now, the important thing here is he also has a katvanga on his left shoulder. He's also seated either in a relaxed posture or in a vajra posture, but we can't tell because he's wearing he's wearing lay clothes, he's wearing monastic clothes, and he's wearing tantric garb uh, as well with the lotus hat uh, atop his head. Now, the really important thing here is not to get concerned about the hand gestures because we do have a variation in the right hand gesture. So he's holding a Vajra Scepter, fine, but we have three different types. We have not of the Vajra Scepter, but of, of how the hand is placed. Uh, the very vast majority of Padmasambhava uh, paintings and sculpture, the right hand and the Vajra is placed at the heart and, and the Vajra stands vertically. That's the vast majority. Now, there, there's another gesture where the Vajra is held over uh, the right knee, and this is less common, but you can still find it in painting a lot more than you can generally in sculpture. And then the third is where the Vajra is actually held upraised and to the right side of the body, almost in a, in a striking posture, a throwing posture, similar to Vajrapani. Uh, so you have this form with the Vajra up, upraised at the right. Now there's very few of these, and, and this last one, the upraised Vajra, these are often more associated with meditational forms or guru yoga forms of Padmasambhava, which are based upon the, the, the main form. The main form is far more uh, devotional. The main form, um, just holding the, the Vajra at the heart, very basic. This we can find, um, we can find it uh, as a centerpiece for life story paintings. We find it as a centerpiece for a three-figure configuration with uh, uh, Mandarava Nishit Sogyal or Trisung Detsun and uh, uh, Shantarakshita. Or we can find it uh, uh, 
with depictions of the copper-colored mountain, um, sometimes field of accumulation, but usually if it's a Longchen Nintik cycle of Nyingma practice, then we will see the Vajra held at the side. But the Vajra held at the side is, is, is uh, much, much less common than the Vajra held at the heart. And the Vajra over the knee, we often find really with depictions of the copper-colored mountain for some reason, and I can't explain really why that is the case. So, just touching on the three different uh, ways that the main form of Padmasambhava can appear, Vajra at the heart, Vajra at the knee, upraised to Vajra at the right side. So if you found this useful, you can, uh, you can press the like button, you can subscribe, you can, um, you can always comment, and uh, if you want to help support the work we do, then you can join HAR on Patreon.